the state, we got a late planted crop. So there's issues that, that we have to deal with with late planted crops. That means our insect pressure is gonna be worse, whether it's bow worms, loopers, and of course red banded stink bugs and, and our native stink bugs too. And that means that uh, trying to finish out this season could be expensive for our producers. You know, our concern is is on these late planted beans, what the yield potential is and 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 how much we can afford to spray. You know, and, and, and that concerns us, particularly with the red banded situation. We're seeing red band stink bugs popping up now all the way up to Pine Bluff and Stuttgart area. We're concerned about them making as much progress across the state as they already have, and, it, and it's kind of indicative of, of what we can expect. You know, this population of red bands moving back into the state, but a mild winter this past year, this past winter in 2018 coming into 2019, and we're seeing that movement of red bands back into the state, and it's progressing even quicker than I thought it would. The hurricane that we had that, that blew in, you know, that, that blows in a lot of migratory type pests like red bands and soybean looper and that kind of, kind of stuff. Let's look. <laughs> Perfect time. <laughs> the things that we do that we normally can do to avoid uh, this situation is plant early. And we couldn't do that this year because of the spring, and that's a big thing. So what we do is try to find uh, insecticides that are both economical and effective. Awareness of what our thresholds are and spraying when we need to and not spraying when we don't. We want to avoid unnecessary applications as much as possible. Uh, particularly in the southern half of the state, we've got a pretty good bollworm flight going on in the soybeans and a lot of growers are having a treat. And, and one of the things that we've started looking at the last few years has been the, the virus, the NPV, uh, nuclear polyhedrosis virus. If I can control the number one pest in soybeans in Arkansas at five bucks an acre, that can make the difference between a grower making a profit and not. It's very effective, it's very non-toxic, it's not having any impact on any other insects or off-target animals like birds and bees and all that kind of stuff. It's extremely safe for them. And actually what we see with this virus is once we get it in the system, when they die, they become a virus factory and they produce even more virus out there in that field. So it can perpetuate and in a lot of cases last year, uh, we saw worms that were still dying uh, in the field 45 days after application. So uh, there's a lot of potential for this to help uh, make control better and more economical. And we're also pursuing uh, a virus for soybean looper and one for fall armyworm, which will even help growers more and provide that, that broader range of control across those kind of pests. So there's a lot of potential there, we, we feel like, for our producers in Arkansas. That problem that we had in 17, where a lot of growers in the southern half of the state treated three times for red band, and it's, it's extremely expensive, and you can't control them very well with single products. You have to tank mix products to get real good control. And so it gets really expensive for us uh, to control red bands. So we have, you know, with the yield potential of a late planted crop and then the insect problems on top of it, we're gonna have to stay on top of our game and do a good job scouting and treat as needed and make sure that we, we keep the pest below threshold and, and cause an economic damage.